The whole purpose of, of this is to really accommodate, get more iron blocks in production, get more iron blocks available to those who are really interested in them, um, make a good product and keep the price as reasonable as we can. So we're at the Haas, at the shop, and we never got a chance to uh, do a wrap up of PRI and the trip to the foundry about the, uh, the iron blocks. Um, so I thought it'd be a good idea for us to chat a little and, um, you know, kind of update the world on what's going on. Because I heard somebody say, there's no iron blocks in the U.S. And we know that's not true. Well, we've been talking to the foundry um, probably leading up to that about a month or so about what we're doing with the iron blocks. The foundry wants to revamp our tooling a little bit to make it easier for them to produce our blocks. What they're looking to do is revamp our tooling so that it fits uh, some more automated equipment so that they can more easily produce our blocks. Um, yeah, we're, we're Otherwise, the price of our blocks, the per, price per casting for us is going to go up substantially. So as I understand it, they some of the things they need to do is reduce the size of the external footprint right. of we, the boxes. Our, our tool is... So it fits in their right. our, production Our tool for, for making one of these blocks is actually a four-foot cube, um, and they want to smallen that up to be able to use one of their core boxes. It's a sort of like a carousel-style machine rather than have to move it around, each one around and over the frame. Right. Um, otherwise, so basically what we have to do is we have to write a check to keep from having to write a lot more checks. Yeah. So we have to write a check to redo the pooling as opposed to writing a bigger check every time we order blocks. So. Right. And that also, from what we got while we were at the foundry, um, that will, part of what reduces the cost is fewer people have to touch the, the box as they move it through. Yeah, and it uses, a, it will use less sand because they now recycle the sand. I think I think it's it's always been interesting to me that we've been able to produce both the iron and the aluminum off the same set of tools, which is kind of how we slash you have always tried to do everything is just you know get the most out of one you know one opportunity. And I I, well, that, I feel really fortunate that we're not forced to have two was, sets of tools. That was part of my plan when I designed the block, and this block now is in its twelfth year of production. Um, was to make, be able to make one set of tooling. The tooling, I mean, the fact of the matter is the tooling is very, very expensive. I mean, you could, you could buy a pretty nice house for what right. tool, tooling costs to do one block. Right. Um, so to be able to have, the Cleveland market is, is a pretty small market, and we, we being uh, Titus, doing small run blocks, there's other companies around that do small run blocks, but we, you know, we are not producing nearly as many blocks as like World or Dark or anything like that. So what's happened now in things have changed is companies like Dart and World, um, they used to have their iron blocks made and they were very much mass produced, which and the price of the iron per casting was very, very low. Their aluminum block was much more expensive than an iron block because their aluminum blocks were done in smaller foundries in the short run. So that's right. why the aluminum block used to always be so, so much, much more higher price than the iron block. Right. Well, today, we our blocks are done short run both iron and aluminum. So that's the reason our block costs more than a, 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 the, a dark iron from back in the day. An iron block, an iron casting, it's, it's much thought. We get a lot of phone calls um, to do iron blocks. And we don't keep a large inventory of iron castings because us being a short run, um, our, our iron castings actually cost me more than what an aluminum casting costs. So it's always the thought, we get the phone call that says, okay, I want to buy an iron block because iron is going to be so much cheaper than aluminum. Right. But that's really not the case because an iron block, the casting itself, bare from the foundry, right. actually costs me more than what an aluminum and yet, block does. And the only difference between the two blocks finished when it goes out the door is the aluminum block has sleeves put in. Yeah. So really the only difference, that's why our iron block and our, and our realistically, our iron block should be higher priced compared to our aluminum block than what it is. Right. But there's only a certain amount that the market 
will attend sure. there. Sure, and we try to accommodate by keeping a, a price difference to the best that we can um, between what people expect and what the reality is, which is um, essentially we could charge the same or more for the iron block if we were to do the same ratio of cost to output and margins and all that other stuff, but we don't to try to well, accommodate we, that. We market. are actually, for other blocks that are getting cast in the same foundry, we are actually several hundred dollars cheaper right. per block than, than um, even more popular big block Chevys and things like that. Sure. Big, their big block Chevys are several hundred dollars more than ours in iron and several hundred dollars more than ours in aluminum. Right. Um, right. But it's, like I say, it's, it's just the price of uh, keeping those castings because it's funny because when we get a bunch of phone calls for iron, we sort of stock up on iron a little bit, and then all of a sudden, everyone wants aluminum all of a sudden, and we don't have aluminum sitting on sure. the floor. What's your gut on how everything went at the foundry with the iron and the tooling? Do you feel like do you feel like you're going to be happy with the output based on whatever details were hashed out? Because I stayed out of the way while two engineers talked, and ultimately, it'll be in the product that I get to see what what the outcome well, is. What's I'm, your gut? I'm really happy with. Um, the, the castings that they produce for yeah. us because Agreed. number one, our casting is very thick. Mm -hmm. So there's, it's not like we have thin spots and we have these real right. critical areas and things like that. Right. We, there's, when I designed the block years back, it was put as much material in it as basically I could. Mm -hmm. And that's why our iron block is heavy. Yeah. Um, matter of fact, I just spoke with a, a gentleman the other day. He wanted to do some slalom and autocross and things like that. And I said, he doesn't want an iron. The difference in price of our iron to our aluminum with a car that you want to handle like that, you definitely don't want my iron block in the front of that car. Right. And it was a 67 Mustang, I think, because... Yeah, it'll nosedive. It's going to nosedive, and the, nose dive, the mm -hmm. butt end is going to be in the front of the... Right, It's going to be right. in the front of the car before right. you know it. So, so overall, you think um, whatever adjustments, tweaking... Um, Obviously, we're still going to get a really good product out of that foundry. Yeah, and that's actually what the, the foundry's uh, concerns are, is to make sure that when we do change anything, that we don't make uh, a product that is in for passing that's uh, any of less quality. If we want to work toward anything, it's going to be of, of a better quality. Sure. Um, now, when you say change anything, do you mean design-wise? Um, we're not really going to change anything. They're going to change probably the way that they pour um, the iron and the way that maybe the, the molds actually go together a little bit when they're assembled so that uh, it takes fewer people maybe to um, assemble the cores because it, when you put this together, there's a whole pack um, of, of everything that you see in this block that is air space is actually sand yeah. when it's in the mold. Right. So um, it, it's pretty intricate. There's nine pieces that... that that come together to make a block. As you can see right here, there's a backwards number two. Mm. So the front of this right here, that's the number two core box. Mm. Um, that's just yeah. they're, they're yeah. labeled when they're in the when they're machined when they machine the core boxes. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, it's they're yeah. labeled that way. But yeah, it, it takes uh, nine pieces in order nine cores to put together to make this this water. Yeah. To make the, it's a complicated the, thing. It, it is a very complicated, complicated piece thing. to put together. Yeah. And then basically what's happening is you're taking this big cube and putting all this stuff inside of it, and then you take another half of the cube and close it all up, and you're doing it blind. So yeah. everything inside has to be lined up, lined up, and held right rigidly, and everything like right. that because you're doing it blind. Right. And you're trying basically to put about a 3,000 pound stone down on top of another stone with a bunch of intricate parts inside of it. Yeah. So. yeah, so I'm glad it was a good trip all the way around. PRI was good, the foundry was good, and we, the whole purpose of, of this is to really accommodate, get more iron blocks in production, get more iron blocks available to those who are really interested in them, um, make a good product, and keep the price as reasonable as we can given all the factors that affect it. Yeah, it's it's not that we're going to be able to make the blocks really any cheaper, but what we're trying to do is not make the price continue to climb. Because right. the price has climbed over the past few years. The price has kind of climbed with, the, with materials and everything going up. So, you know, the hardware, the, the steel that we make the main caps out of, everything has gone up in price, or what we make the main bearings out of. Everything. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is... We want to move more. And we're, we're actually trying to do right now is pre-buy 
a lot of different yeah. stuff so that we can buy it at a price now so yeah. that our price doesn't continue to creep. Right. Um, we can kind of lock in on some prices. But And another thing what we're trying to, to do with these is put more of them, uh, for lack of a better term, on the shelf so that when someone calls, um, they are pretty much readily available and right. not um, totally built to order. Hey, where is that iron block that's about to go out? It's the, got the uh, iron block. The bed. nine two. That one is over sitting in front of the home. Because I, yeah, well, let's it just got home. All right. Well, let's go take a picture of it and we'll call it a day. Thanks for watching. Happy New Year. Like, share, and subscribe. <laughs>